which is called The Circulation Around High and Low Pressure Systems. And I really, really like this topic because when I'm teaching, I really try to encourage my students not to memorize. And instead, I want them to understand how the atmosphere works. <clears throat> now, what we're going to be doing in this investigation is actually taking us all the way back to investigation 1A when we talked about the hand twist model. And I'll just remind you that the hand twist model investigation 1A allowed you to determine that the circulation of the winds around the center of high pressure is clockwise and outward directed and the air sinks into the center of high pressure. <clears throat> Conversely, the circulation around the center of low pressure is counterclockwise and inward directed and then that air rises once it converges at the low center. So what we're going to basically be doing here in this video is coming up with the same result, at least in terms of the horizontal circulations, only we're going to show why it is that these circulations actually occur. <clears throat> and in fact, I gave you pretty much all the building blocks that you need in my discussion in Investigation 8A. So what I'm going to do here, this I don't know how long this video is going to last because uh, a lot of it's going to be actually rehashed from Investigation 8A, but let's get started and that way we can actually get our way through it and be done with this particular week of our class. So, starting with the PowerPoint, Investigation 8B, again, circulation around high and low pressure systems. <clears throat> now, the investigation is going to give you two examples that you're going to use to assess these circulation patterns. The first one, and the better defined one, is going to be of a low pressure system that is centered over East Tennessee, and this is going to be at zero Z on the 13th of February of 2024. And in particular, what you're going to do is you're going to focus on a station that's right along the Tennessee-Georgia border. <clears throat> now, what the investigation is going to ask you to do is what I actually put you through at the end of my Investigation 8A video. And that is to draw the wind, the pressure gradient, the Coriolis force, and the friction vectors around this particular station. And I'm not going to do this station because I don't want to actually do what the AMS is asking you to do. Instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to recap what I did near the end of Investigation 8A's video with one of the stations that I discussed then. <clears throat> so just to recall that in Investigation 8A, I chose an example from October of 2022, and I looked at a location around low pressure in North Dakota and a location around high pressure in Georgia. We're going to take a look at North Dakota, and I'm going to review this again just very quickly because this is going to be analogous to your situation in Georgia. All right, so what you're going to be asked to do in this investigation, again, is to draw the pressure gradient, coils, frictional force vectors, and the wind vector. And we already did that, again, for this location in North Dakota. So zooming in, again, just as we did in our Investigation 8A video, <clears throat> here is our location. Here's our pressure gradient force vector always directed perpendicular to the isobars, high to low. Again, to get our wind arrow or vector for that direction, all you need to do is follow down the wind direction line so that you know the wind is blowing from the northeast towards the south, from the northwest toward the southeast, and the wind direction arrow, again, is just going to be northwest to southeast. The Coriolis force arrow or vector, always 90 degrees to the right of the wind, and friction always opposed to the wind. Let me again remind you that in order to figure out which is left and which is right when you're looking at the wind, you need to put yourself at the end of the wind arrow or vector and then face down the arrow to the arrowhead <clears throat> and then put your arms out, left and right in your mind's eye. So that left is going to be over here, basically to the northeast of this arrow, and right is going to be here, basically to the southwest of the arrow. All right, so this is how we get our winds around this particular location. Now, if we take a look at our second example in the investigation, and this one is, I think it's kind of unfortunate because it is for an area of high pressure that's centered over eastern Michigan, but you can see that the isobar pattern is really, really weak. The more well-defined isobars are around low in Colorado and another low off the northeast corner of this particular map. But we're going to try and actually draw the arrows or vectors for a location around this high. And we're going to choose Detroit. So here's Detroit. And what we have here is our one location in Detroit. And you're actually given instructions of how it is 
to draw the pressure gradient force arrow or vector because if you don't know how to do it you won't get it right so just follow the instructions in the investigation very carefully the example that i'm going to show next which is again the same example that i showed in investigation 8a is a little bit better defined <clears throat> but here it is remember we took a look at the same day in october 2022 so the 11th of october and we focused on basically atlanta so here's atlanta we hover in again, and again, I'm going to draw the arrows or the vectors. So the pressure gradient force, high to low, perpendicular to the isobars. Here's our wind, crossing, crossing the isobars at an angle from high to low. And remember that I actually ignored the wind direction line for this particular station because it really showed the winds blowing parallel to the isobars, which is not how it happens. Here is our Coriolis force vector, again, 90 degrees to the right of our wind arrow. Again, place yourself at the end of the wind arrow or vector. Look straight into the arrowhead to get right here to the northeast and left here to the southwest. So here's our Coriolis force, 90 degrees to the right of the wind arrow. And then here is friction. Now, what, which, which you're not really given here, and I want to actually emphasize this a little bit more than the investigation does, is how to actually figure out the wind circulations around centers of high and low pressure. Now, in order to do this, you can't just look at a single station model and the wind at a single station model. You actually have to take a look at the winds basically around an area of high or low pressure in order to get a sense of how the wind directions are changing as you move around the high and the low in a circle. Now, for our low in this example, it's right here where my cursor is twitching around. All right, so it's right here. And our high for the southeast case is pretty well defined. But what you need to do is to actually take a look at how the wind directions are changing as you move around your area of low pressure and then high pressure. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually fit in some arrows that I call streamlines. So you can get a sense of how the wind direction is changing around both the low and the high. And I'm going to do the low first. So here's one streamline. As you can see, the winds are basically shifting out of the, from the northwest into the west. Here's the second streamline, wind shifting from the west northwest, beginning to shift into the west and the southwest. Here's a third streamline, wind shifting from the southwest, then towards the west, or I should say towards the south. And then finally, our last streamline is going to be winds that basically start out of the south and become southeast. So what you see around our area of low pressure is that the winds indeed do spiral counterclockwise and in toward the center of the low pressure, which again, going all the way back to investigation 1A, is exactly what you found when you basically taught yourself the hand twist model. This explains why we get that counterclockwise and inward directed circulation around low pressure. <clears throat> now, if we take a look at our high, I'm going to draw a couple of streamlines here as well. So the winds start out of the southeast and they swing around to the south, then southeast and south again, or southwest, then to west, and southwest, and then towards the west again. Unfortunately, we don't have the east side of the high here, but what you can see on the west side is that the winds are swirling out from the high clockwise across the ice bars at an angle from higher towards lower pressure. So winds are counterclockwise and inward directed around our low, clockwise and outward directed from the center of the high. And so this is what you actually do see when you take a look at real world surface maps. Now the last map I'm gonna show on this particular PowerPoint and in this particular video <clears throat> is an actual streamline map. This streamline map is from the same time as these maps, 20Z on the 11th of October of 2022. Now what this map is showing, what this streamline map is showing is basically instantaneous streamlines, so the flow of air across the United States at this particular point in time. So this is basically an instantaneous flow of air across the United States. I'm going to point out a couple of details here that basically will just emphasize what I said in the previous few slides. First of all, here's our low basically centered on the northern edge of our map. Now, if you take a look at the streamlines around this low, you'll see that they're swirling counterclockwise and in toward the center of our low. Also, one of the things that we see on streamline maps is that you'll notice that these streamlines are all beginning to converge about this long streamline right here. And you can see it a little bit less emphasized 
on the eastern side of this line. But when the streamlines come together, when they converge and come together, this is where we see our fronts. And so the cold front that you saw on the map in the previous slides, and you can go back and look at that on your own, is right here. So here's the cold front extending from the low. Now let's take a look at our high, and this is really well defined here. Here's the high just off the mid-Atlantic coast. And if you take a look at the streamlines, you'll see them swirling in a very well-defined clockwise and outward manner. And so again, you see the counterclockwise circulation around lows and the clockwise and out circulation around highs. And so the streamline map really shows it well. And again, you can take a look at the surface maps that I provided for October 11th of 2022 and take a look at how the wind directions at the stations change as you move around your low. And I would recommend that you take a look at the station models and move yourself around the low counterclockwise. You'll see the change of wind direction more logically. And from the high, basically start clockwise and move clockwise out from the high and look at the station models. And again, you'll see the swirling that you see shown much better here in the streamline map. Okay, so that's everything I want to say about investigation 8B. 8A and 8B taken together I think are really, really important because, because both of these investigations taken together show you why it is that we get winds. And then when you take the winds and you take a look at how winds vary around centers of high and low pressure, you can actually prove to yourself that we get the clockwise and outward directed circulations around highs and counterclockwise and inward directed circulations around lows that we had to assume from the very beginning of our class with the hand twist model when we were just basically asking you to take it on faith and and, and memorize it. But now you've got it. Now you can actually prove to yourself why we get these wins. So that's pretty much everything I want to say about Investigation 8B. I'm going to end this video now. I will post it on YouTube and post an announcement when it's ready for you to view. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, I just forgot to say this, if you have any questions whatsoever, by all means, post them to the discussion board or ask me live during my Zoom office hours fall session, Wednesday evening, 7.30 to 8.30, and Sunday afternoons from 2 to 3. So that's it. That's all. I'll end it now, and you'll be hearing from me soon when you're ready to see these.